Hey, it's Joe from the Automator. In this video, Isaiah is going to walk you through how to create your own custom functions and not a hotkey. Functions, by the way, are just by far the easiest way to level up. Using built-in functions is great, but when you can create your own, crazy powerful. I like to say they're go subs on crack, right? Incredibly powerful. So check it out. This video is an extract from the Intro to Auto Hotkey course. So we're just piecemealing it in because it's such a great thing to learn. But if you want to learn more about auto hockey, you might want to check out that course. All of our courses come with a 200% money back guarantee. So if you're not satisfied with it in the first 30 days, just ask for your money back and we pay you twice what you paid for it, right? It's a great course. I highly recommend you check it out. All the courses are broken down into usually three to five minute videos. Some of them go a little longer, but most of them are very clear to the point. So you get to learn exactly what you're looking for. So check them out. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you learned something in this video, please like the video. It really helps more people see the video, which is great because we want more people to learn how to hotkey. Have an awesome day. Cheers. After variables and if statements, which are kind of like the building blocks of any programming language, the next step are functions. That's another thing that as soon as you understand them, and use them, you will go so far ahead with them. So the way how I would think about functions is just naming a group of steps. So let's say that you have a group of commands or actions that you're going to be executing. And you're not going to execute it only once. You're going to execute it many times. You just want to put a simple name to that in a way that instead of having to write the same things over and over again, you just call the name and just perform the actions. That's what a function is. So let me go ahead and show you how you can define a function and how to use it. So at this point, I just created a little script. It's very simple. What it does is that it is a hotkey that we defined, F1, that performs four actions. It gets the current active window. And this is based on something that we saw recently with one of our clients. We got the active window at the moment and we saved that into a variable. Then we activated Notepad at this point. And after Notepad is activated, then we send these keystrokes. This is F1, whatever the keystrokes are. And then after I finish sending that, then I reactivate the old program. So it just activates Notepad, sends some keystrokes, and then activates the previous program, whatever was active at the time. So what we're going to do is that we're going to run the script, and I'm going to show you what it works before I move on with, the, with creating a function. Let me go ahead and make sure that Notepad is spelled correctly. We have Notepad here. There we go. So I'm going to make Notepad the background window at the moment. I'm going to run my script, having my site for our hotkey open. So what this should do is activate Notepad, send some keystrokes, and come back to site for our hotkey when I press F1, which it looks like it did it. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. There it goes. So um, this is the funny thing about it. So let's go ahead. There it goes. Very simple. Now, where's the other thing? So I had the similar uh, similar functions for F2, F3, F4, and so on. So I had those hotkeys set up and hitting either of them should send me different parts of the text. So at this point, you will see that each of them is sending its own number. Fine, that's perfect. Where do functions come into play? Well, if you take a look at the code, I am activating the old window, I'm activating notepad, and then I'm reactivating the old window. This code is duplicated, it's the same thing. And I have three and now four hotkeys doing the same thing. The only thing that changes really is the number here, this F1, which is the message that I'm sending. So let's say that I wanted to do the same, but instead of activating notepad, I wanted to activate, I don't know, Chrome. Chrome. Let's say that I want to activate Chrome. I would have to go one by one now and modify each of them, which I don't know if you're not a thing, might not be actually practical, especially if you have a lot of hotkeys or if you have a lot of code repeated in multiple places, right? So at this point, making those type of changes are not practic practical. That's where a function comes in. So let me just fold everything in. Let's grab the first one here. 
The good thing about functions is that they look very similar to hotkeys at the moment because they're the same. And what I do after the return, you can put them anywhere you want, but you can put them in any other place. You would have to create a function by giving it a name. Let's say send message to window. Usually what you would do is open a, uh, the brackets, close it and put your commands inside your named function. So this is a function now. And whenever I call that name with the parentheses, it would just execute those lines. Perfect. So this means I no longer have to have all this code down here. I can just delete all that. And as it is now a one liner, they could be on the same line as the hotkeys. Perfect. There you go. So these are the two things you have to define your function somewhere, but just defining it is not enough. You have to call the function at some point. So in this case, every time I press the F1, it will call the function. Now, as I mentioned, each of them was sending a different value. So this one was sending F1, but the other one was sending F2, and the other one was sending F3 and so on, right? Now, you can pass parameters to a function, and that's what I'm gonna do now. What I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna create a parameter, which is a kind of like a variable, a local variable, that anything that is passed through that variable will be replaced somewhere in my code. In this case, what I want to replace is this guy, I don't need it. So what I need there is a variable. Let's say that that is the key, the key, the pressed key. Let's say pressed key is the name of that thing. That I'm gonna add it into my definition of my function here. So what it says is that that function takes one parameter and that parameter, I'm going to put it right here on this string, which is the one that changes depending on what I passed. So this code right here is essentially the same as the one that we had before. The only key difference now is that here I could switch this to notepad and now all my four hotkeys will be working on the same place. I don't have to change it four times. So again, once you learn about functions and how to use them, you will be blown away by the amount of things that you can do, because now you can have all your steps with a simple name that you can call as many times as you want. So let's test it. Let's make sure that this is actually working fine. Let's open up Notepad and let's make sure now that after I do that, let me add a new line character there that I was missing <laughs> and I didn't want to add it to the four of them. I just add it once. And now when I run my script, if I hit F1, F2, F3, and F4, I get my four different messages by calling the exact same function. I'm just passing a parameter that tells it what is it that it's gonna write at the end.